Major dinosaur fossil collecting sites are scattered all across America, especially in western North America. The arid regions preserve the bones long enough for paleontologists to go and collect them. One such famous place here in Texas is the Big Bend region. Big Bend is a famous place for collecting large dinosaurs, especially after this past year when major discoveries, including an Alamosaurus, were found there. Creatures like this Tyrannosaurus rex, which used to roam western North America, might also be found down in the Big Bend area. In this portion, the Texas dinosaurs portion of the dinosaur exhibit here at the museum is dedicated strictly to those fossils and dinosaurs found within the Lone Star State. Life and death in the Big Bend and prehistoric Texas give museum visitors a better understanding of life during the Cretaceous Age here in the Lone Star State. The Dallas Museum of Natural History is the only public collections based research-driven natural history museum in the area and as such their work starts in the field and continues in the lab. I spend anywhere from a month to probably close to three months in the field working in dinosaur burying rocks from West Texas and Big Bend National Park. Obviously the first question is what is it that we've got and if we can't identify it in the field then we're looking for those key features on the bone that help us figure out what it is. Uh, quite often, you know, as you would imagine, when you're only seeing 5% of a bone, you can guess wrong. And what you thought it was in the field may not turn out to be what it actually is. The dinosaur behind me is named Malawisaurus, and it's actually a cast of a skeleton of an animal from Malawi, Africa. And it's perfectly reasonable to ask the question, what's an animal from Malawi doing in the Dallas Museum of Natural History? Well, there's two reasons. One is this animal was found and described and named by a group of researchers from Southern Methodist University. So it's got a Dallas connection. And the second reason is in fact that this animal, Malawisaurus, is an ancestral form to the Alamosaurus that I'm working on in Big Bend, Texas. The work of Dr. Fiorio and other staff researchers pays off with the museum's impressive fossil exhibits. The Cretaceous rocks that this building is built on, and as a matter of fact all of DFW is built on, is in fact a, uh, they're marine rocks. They're, they're rocks laid down under the ocean. As a result, we get a lot of marine reptiles and fossil fish that, that come out of the rocks here, mm -hmm. as well as a few invertebrates, ammonites, and things like this. This is certainly one of our more spectacular uh, examples of a marine reptile. This is a mosasaur. It came out from around Lake Ray Hubbard. came out before I came to Dallas, but the story, as I understand it, is one of the frustrating things about a, doing field work is quite often you find a fossil years too late that the weather and the elements have hammered it too badly and so you can see almost the ghost of the specimen. In this particular case, the specimen, if you look at the skull closely, there's a few white spots on it, particularly the white at the snout. Mm -hmm. And this specimen was actually found just as it was being exposed as opposed to just after it had been exposed for 50 years or 100 years too long. So this one's kind of a nice story. Let's talk a little bit about this big guy hanging from the ceiling here. Yeah, this is, this is perhaps one of our most spectacular uh, skeletal mounts. This is the largest, certainly one of the two largest sea turtles ever found. This was found by a farmer plowing his field and much of the shell of this animal is real bone. Uh, there's been some reconstruction of the, the flippers and the skull, uh, but we know this turtle is this big because as I said, most of that shell is real. Mm -hmm. Where would this guy be found? This animal was found over in Rockwall County. Hmm, and okay. again, it was found by a non-specialist. It mm -hmm. was found by somebody who just kept their eyes open when they were out doing whatever they do. Do we know about how uh, deep the ocean was in this area at the time? Uh, it, was, it was a relatively shallow ocean. It was continental shelf kind of depth mm -hmm. as opposed to deep water marine. Okay. 
Now, not all of the fossils that we see here are 100 million year old dinosaur bones, are they? That's right. Above, <laughs> uh, above the Cretaceous rocks here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we have a lot of uh, gravels. And these gravels are Pleistocene gravels, meaning that they're on the order of tens of thousands of years old, depending on where you are. And from the gravels, we get completely different animals. We get things like the mammoth, We've, uh, which this one came out of the Trinity River gravels along I-30. Mm -hmm. We've got other animals, uh, evidence of giant ground sloths, uh, giant armadillo-like animals, glyptodon. Um, there's evidence of giant beavers. There's evidence of bears. You know, some animals we have familiarity with and some are, are long gone, mm -hmm. but um, their Pleistocene gravels are full of other animals. Okay, so if you're ever digging through the gravel, you might run across a bone. That, That's right. Yeah, so don't throw it away. <laughs> now many people from Texas are used to seeing armadillos. Armadillos often get hit by cars and you see them on the side of the road with their paws kind of sticking up in the air. This is a glyptodon and it's an armadillo related creature you can see by the size, you would not want to hit this with a small car. Actually, you wouldn't want to hit it with a big one. 